Hey everybody, welcome back to my world where no matter how old you get, you never need to grow up. And I'm trying to catch up on unboxing all of my dolls and going through all the amazing stuff I was sent. And while I was prepping and, and, and working with Sweet Sweet, I got two amazing packages from Mattel Creations. And I think that they both do a really great job of fulfilling the mission of Mattel Creations, which is to have this opportunity for designers and artists to create limited run dolls that are really kind of I get high concept, kind of out there, something that they wouldn't necessarily be able to do in a Playline doll. And, you know, sometimes I've been a little like, well, okay, you know, that's, that's kind of cool, but I wish it was a little bit more something. And, but then with these two dolls, I feel like they've definitely, definitely, definitely fulfilled that mission. And so the first one is the first one I was sent, and that is the Disney Alice in Wonderland doll, which we're going to take a look at in a minute. And like that one just kind of baked my brain. And then the other one is Freak Du Chic Draculaura, which it just, you know, both of them really, really stunning. Now, from what I can tell at the moment, uh, you can still uh, try to order the Alice in Wonderland doll. It's $100, I believe, on Mattel Creations. And at the moment, Freak Du Chic... <laughs> she tried to acrobat her way out of my hands. Freak Du Chic Draculaura is sold out. But I noticed something interesting when I went to go check on her is that um, the Runway dolls, Runway Cleo is available again. Um, the... Uh, Frankie is available again like they don't say sold out anymore on them so I'm wondering if if you don't get them in the first round I think maybe they're starting to make more those of you who actually know what's going on please feel free to comment um you know and let everybody know that I'm wrong but it just seemed like I went and I was like wait 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 because I missed out on getting Cleo and now she's available and I was like oh I can get her wait what so that was a whole moment for my brain. So let's start by taking a look at, first of all, let's find some glasses. Get glasses, Melissa, get glasses. Oh, there you are! There's the screen. So this one, I think, just takes the absolute amazingness that is Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass, kind of um, just just, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a drug trip. I mean, really, you know. <laughs> so I always kind of crack up about um, how Alice in Wonderland somehow became a kid's thing because through the looking glass, really not a kid's thing. But there's also those fantastical elements of the story that do play well into transitioning it into a kid's story. I mean, look at this box. Just, I just love the box. I mean, just all of the little details on the packaging here are just, it's like, let's just capture as much of that heightened color and sort of psychedelic kind of, I mean, like the Cheshire Cat is so something that you see when you're tripping. I mean, and then the box does this which is so cool. It's so, so cool to reveal this doll, which I think is just, just absolutely kind of, what, you know? So let me just read you the back of this while you kind of stare at my shaking box. Oh, my fur and whiskers. Things just keep getting curiouser and curiouser. Making her debut in 1951's classic movie, Disney's Alice in Wonderland, Sweet Alice had no idea the adventures awaiting her when she fell down the rabbit hole. This special collector Alice doll celebrates the wacky, wondrous moment when Alice eats a magic cake and grows too big to fit in the white rabbit's house. Um, for them to pick that, instead of going for the obvious tea party right or or the croquet match you know with the 
with the flamingos or I mean you know there's these other kind of iconic Alice in Wonderland moments that they could have gone with would have been very very cool to choose to put a house on a doll. I just think that is just genius and now I have to figure out okay so the dust cover comes off awesome sauce and then and then oh good this comes out and in the back there is a stand and so the good thing about the way this is done is I think if I am very very careful what are the chances of me being very very careful I am going to try to be very very careful in getting the doll out so that I can take the house off of the doll take the doll out of the house um, and uh, oh my gosh it's just so cute I mean look at the little freaking white rabbit over here like I want to kind of keep I want to keep that all if I can like there's all of these extra little you see you see how big she is in comparison to the furniture and all that stuff so I want to try to do that without really messing up because I, I want to put her back in this packaging with the house on her head because I think it's really really cool my struggle is always this though <laughs> I almost knocked over a very large cup of tea like like if if this was the only collector doll I owned awesome because yes display it baby it's not the only collector doll. It's not the only doll I own. And I just wonder if anybody has any advice or if you want. I, I believe you can do like, you can now do on YouTube, you can do shorts as a comment, which is kind of like video replies, which we had back in the days. Anybody remember video replies on YouTube that YouTube then took away from us, but now they gave us shorts and you can make a shorts comment. <laughs> anyway. If anyone has any, or you can uh, DM me on my Instagram, Mommy's World Rocks, uh, how do you manage to display things like this when you have a massive doll collection? Has anyone figured that out? Also, side note, tooting my own horn for a moment, I had two very exciting things happen during the whole sweet, sweet Barbie release pandemonium. I think it was the day before sweets or a couple days before sweet sweet um i got interviewed by the washington post about my doll collection and uh that i'm actually in an article it's washington washington post online i don't even know if they even make an actual paper newspaper anymore um and also the doll aisle is in that uh article as well and it's about our love of collecting love of barbie and our thoughts uh, about the barbie movie and then uh, right after I saw the Barbie movie for the second time last week, I heard from uh, a reporter at People magazine online and uh, I was interviewed with a ton of other people. It was a really uh, cool article about collecting and different levels of collectors. Like somebody spent like $20,000 on an original, you know, like a number one Barbie. Um, and uh, I'll link to both of those articles down below. I think the Washington Post one is behind the paywall, but the People one should be free. I only have two lines in the People one, but it's okay. I'm in People magazine, and uh, my mother and my husband are bragging about it to everybody, and I'm just like, I'm in People magazine talking about Barbie. Ah! <laughs> Sometimes doll collecting is just really, I just realized, I was like, what are these stickers on the bottom of the box? I'm so easily distracted. Uh, it's just amazing. It's amazing that, um, that my love of doll collecting has got gotten to this point and gotten me here and my relationship with my son and now I think I've been doing the channel without my son for as long as I did it with my son because we just celebrated 11 years on June 21st and so for like the first five years Caden was with me and then yeah so anyway lots of stuff I'm just babbling about here I'm going to try to dissect Alice out of her packaging in such a way that I can return her to her packaging. Let us all have a moment of prayer that I get that done. And then after we take a look at Alice, we're gonna take a closer look at Draculaura. So just stick with me, okay? It's gonna be a kind of a longer video, but all Mattel creations related. We'll be right back. And she's out of the house box 
thing. So first of all, I just want to uh, compliment again. <laughs> I dropped the white rabbit. Oh no, I was trying not to do that. Compliment the folks at Mattel Creations and the designers for creating this really adorable little house. Little door. Little door. It's very cute. To put on Alice and have her wear as a hat, but it is decorated inside as well. And it comes with, uh, she's holding in her little hand, which I had to cut off to get her out of the box. Um, there it is, eat me. You know, they should make Valentine's Day hearts that just say eat me, do they? Because that would be really funny, but eat me. Uh, which is what gets her into this whole situation. And then we have the doll. It, she does come with a stand, which is cool. And it's one of these super convoluted saddle stands, which I actually kind of like. They're a little tiny bit less like going to the gynecologist for the doll, only slightly. Uh, her hair is okay. Um, it feels like not the super most high quality hair that ever happened, but it's okay. Um, the ribbon is fabric, which is amazing, but also nerve wracking because if that ever comes off, I'm, I'm pretty much screwed. Her dress is fabulous. And you're like, okay, well, in, in, in some blue dress with a, um, let me make sure her collar's kind of correct here. Um, it's all very, very nice fabric. Like this dress that like the fabric has enough starch in it to make the poofy sleeves poofy. Um, this lace apron on the front, look at that. It is very, very pretty. Like that's not embroidered on. I mean, they could have just screen printed all of this, but it's not. There's actual, this is actual lace. It actually ties in the back. And this kind of an apron is a very common thing uh, that young ladies would have worn over their dress because, you know, we don't, we don't have dry cleaners. We, we can't launder everything every day. So we try to, we put a little apron type thing over our clothes to try to keep them from getting too messy. Here's a good look at the fabric. You see, so it's got some, it's got some love. And then this I absolutely love is that there are, her petticoats are, we've got two. So we've got one petticoat, but the petticoat at the bottom has two, not two, three layers of eyelet. So you've got the two that hang over the top, but when you look underneath, there's another one that just further poofs it out and it's fabric. It's beautiful eyelet fabric. It's not like just like a stiff crinoline. And then she's got bloomers. She's got bloomers with little lace on. The, I just think, you know, those, those are the things that they can do when they're doing a doll at this level. And then her shoes, which for the most part could be just boring Mary Janes, but um, they're not. Look at her shoes. Ooh. Ooh. They're, they're bottles. Eat me, drink me. So all she needs to do is break the heel off her shoe, drink it, and she's back to normal. I think, you know, that's really, really a, a very, uh, a very handy design there. So I'm gonna get her on her, there you go, you're flying. And her feet do not really touch uh, the ground when she get her on this stand, which I think is also very Alice in Wonderland, very through the looking glass. Um, and I now I have to try to get her back into the box. Oh my gosh, so nervous about that, but I think I can make it happen. I don't know why it's so hot in here. I have the air conditioning on, I'm schwitzing. Why? Anyway, now on to Freak Do Chic, which is absolutely one of my favorite all-time releases from Monster High, and it turns out so many other people's. And it's interesting because we don't tend to mention it. You know, like I'll be like Sweet 1600, Ghoul's Night Out, um, Oh gosh, the one with uh, when they had Threaderella and Booger Heels, and which is what I call the Dracula or doll from the from the fairy tale line. I never think to say Freak Du Chic. Yet, what an amazing doll release! Just absolutely was so good, and we never got a Draculaura. 
And now we're getting the Draculaura we really didn't entirely know that we needed. So here she is. And the packaging on this is very, very cool. So now my box, um, again, this was sent to me for free by Mattel Creations. Thank you so much. My UPS man was a little... Uh, a little not careful with my box from Mattel Creations and it, it looked like he stepped on it. So my box is a little damaged, which which definitely helps to inform my decision that I will uh, probably not display the doll in box. And then it opens up, it's got some Velcro, and then, but wait, <clears throat> so the backdrop completely Ta-da! So let's say you had all the Freak Du Chic dolls and you wanted to do a little diorama. You could line them all up right in front of this. Very, very cool. Um, and there's little silhouettes on the side of our ghoul. And the cool thing about the box, in addition, is that you can go either way. Either way that you display her, whether she's hanging upside down like a bat from the trapeze or she's standing on it. And here, although the artwork would seem to indicate that they want you to display her hanging upside down. Love the artwork on the side of the box. This is such a pretty, pretty drawing. I really, really love all the color and the movement. It is just so cool. And then the back, let's flip it this way for you. I mean, just, I mean, oh, it just gives so much. And then the other cool thing is, I don't know if you can see the name on here, but no matter which way you display it, it still ends up uh, being able to spell Draculaura because the A and the D are like the same. That was a very cool touch. Um, I'm just so excited about this ghoul and I can't wait to get her out of her crushed little box. And so we'll do that and I'll be right back. And she's out of the box. And I just think this is so, so cool. It reminds me of the cedar wood She's in storage, but there was a San Diego Comic-Con Cedar Wood doll where she was basically turned into Pinocchio. And inside her box, she's like a marionette and you don't need to take her out of the box to move her around. There were ribbons on the outside of the box. Does anybody remember this? Um, so that's what I was thinking about, about this ribbon. So here she is. So her boots, are designed so that they hook on to the trapeze, which is a little bit like cheating because I'm fairly certain actual trapeze artists, are you questioning me? I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not. Don't, you think believe you're questioning me. Okay, I might be questioning your designers a little bit here, but not really. I mean, it's a cool design, but we know that that's not really how they do it, right? They have to actually, like, use their feet and ankles and wrap them around the... Anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay, tell them more about me. Okay, I will tell them more about you. Do you remember when I used to let the dolls review themselves? Um, I mean, it's Draculaura. I, 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 I mean, it's Draculaura. Like, what else do you need to say? But a couple of details that really, really made me smile. The blush on both of her cheeks is hearts. Our hearts is hearts. Love that. I'm not in love with these super long but extremely flat stuck to her face eyelashes. I do love the little bit of like a Harlequin thing that they've done with her eye makeup that then ties in to kind of the the look of I mean they've mixed together um you know a jester's harlequin pattern here um into her outfit which is so cool and then it's been echoed in the quilting on this amazing cap that she has it's just so cool. Look at the ears. I love the metallicness of it. Um, you can you can kind of move it around a little bit, like if you wanted to see what was going on under it. 
Um, I kind of like it like down more like that because um, I think that just works with all of the makeup um, and I think this is kind of where they wanted it to be. On the back of it there's like this little bow right here that's really cute. Her hair is in these big baloney curls and what's interesting to me is these are are not at all gelled. So you have to be like super careful like I kind of messed up the side of her hair a little bit in unboxing her so I've lost like this has become a bit of a frizzy mess. This isn't so bad but like I touched them too much so I have to be very careful about that. And then her earrings are very cool. They are bats hanging upside down off of a ring in her ear kind of like you know like a circus ring and then they mimic this gold which is a great big bow and I love you know the idea of bows for Draculaura and kind of bringing that into her design. Her cape is kajinkered to her actually it's on little loops it's not even kajinkered sorry there are little loops so you could take it off of her hand if you wanted to uh, and put it back on. I'm keeping it on so that we can do this so we can get the whole bat wings thing going which I'm very familiar with at my age. Bat wings, completely different thing. Love the little shreddy little, you know, it just continues that movement and then she's got a very uh, traditional leotard thing but with some sparkle and some ruffles and then the fishnets which also kind of tie back into the hat and then the boots. I mean they're just the shoes are always amazing when we do Monster High right I mean that's one of the things that I loved so much about the original Monster High. That is so cute. Wait, I gotta go like this. Oh my gosh it's so cute. It's a little it's like a clown hand. See there's the ruffle there's the fingers and the glove. It's a clown hand as her heels that's holding on to the trapeze. So like I said at the beginning of this, I think the, the folks who work at Mattel Creations get to do, if they do it well, some really, really cool stuff like, oops, oops, I just lost the eat me, like a house. I don't know how to get the, get get her I don't know how to do this with my left hand but basically a house that goes on a doll's head in a doll that hangs upside down from a trapeze um and oh and I forgot Count Fabulous is here but he doesn't really I can't figure out a way to attach him to anything so I might just glue dot him to the trapeze I have an idea of where I want to display her um I love Count Fabu we love him so much I just think they did a really great job of of using that creativity and the license to do stuff um, and come up with something really creative and different and and I and I'm really really first of all obviously very grateful that I was sent these dolls for free but I'm really really very excited that I was able to get her because I was not available the day that she came out so I never would have gotten her so thank you so much Mattel Creations for supporting me I really really appreciate it but also I would say keep checking back on Mattel Creations because I could swear that Cleo sold out because I didn't get her and now I'm like well I need to go order her now um and so I think maybe some things you know as they maybe orders get canceled or they adjust things or maybe they add more to the queue post San Diego Comic-Con I don't know but take a look you never know you might get lucky and be able to get your hands on this beautiful girl this lovely lady is still available on Mattel Creations um, and I will put a link down below and thank you all so much for watching and sharing the love of dolls with me it makes me so happy and I was so excited because I was like today I'm finally gonna get to play with those two dolls and I did I'm super excited and now I have to figure out how to get the house back on her head and get her into the box mm, wish me luck I will see you all again real soon thank you so much for watching bye